gotta be kidding me! Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? We are back at it again today with another Guardian Druid Guide. With tomorrow being the highly anticipated release of Castle Nathria and Mythic Plus, I figure it's time we take a look at the most dominating build you can use to get yourself into Mythic Plus dungeons. Let's get into it. This one's going to be a banger. Before we get started, I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is my Twitch stream. Without the love and support of the Rage Nation, I couldn't make the content that I do, so thank you guys. Alright, since we already have a number of comprehensive druid guides posted on this channel with reference to rotations, abilities, covenant choices, etc., this video is going to try to stay as targeted to the Mythic Plus specifics as possible. The other videos you might find helpful will be listed in the description below for your reference. For those interested in taking a look at some pre-made dungeon routes and pull strats, head over to ragingbeardedscott.gg and take a look at the Keystone routes in our Discord channel. Today's topics we are going to cover to help you blast off week one are gearing, talents, legendaries, consumables, and soulbind slash conduits. Kicking it off today, we are taking a look at gearing. Now, as we've discussed in previous dungeon guides, with the changes to stats via diminishing returns, we are placing even more value on agility and therefore item level. However, when not sacrificing item level between two pieces, you want to be favoring versatility overall, as it is directly affecting both your output and regulating damage taken. After versatility for a more lethal build, I favor haste for reduced cooldowns and increased stacks during Ravenous Frenzy. But when you start to hit a wall, I would swap to a verse mastery build for more defensive options. As for your trinkets, I am running the Blood Spattered Scale from Hakkar into Other Side, an inscrutable quantum device from the Manastroms in the same dungeon. The Blood Spattered Scale, when used in larger back pulls, as I am notorious for, scales up in both damage done and damage blocked based on the number of mobs around with a cap of 5. The inscrutable quantum device more often than not grants me around 500 verse or crit, uh, but its use varies based on the situation it's used in. For example, if you are CC'd, it'll break your CC when used. It's a nifty little trinket, and with not many great equipped trinket options available until Nathria's release, I find it to be the best defensive and offensive option for Guardian Druids. Alright, now that we've gotten a general gearing priority set up, let's take a look at talents. For at least the first week, we're going to be placing a lot of priority on our Thrash build, and it'll become more clear when we move into our legendaries why that is. That means there are four main talents you want to be taking, Blood Frenzy, Incarnation, Earth Warden, and Rend and Tear. These abilities will help ensure that your 3 minute cooldowns, including Ravenous Frenzy, should you have chosen the Venthyr Covenant, will be used to eliminate 2 or 3 packs at a time, helping greatly increase your party's efficiency while moving through a keystone. I've had pulls this week, prior to me even having a legendary crafted, where I've pulled roughly 11k DPS on 2 or 3 packs, and with proper CCs and interrupts, it saved massive amounts of time while moving through dungeons. Okay, now let's take a look at the two legendaries I believe will make up the entirety of our Mythic Plus push build, at least for Season 1. The first of which should be obtainable right on reset tomorrow with a 100% drop chance and will be our big pumper when it comes to damage output, Ursox Fury Remembered. This legendary is obtained from Floor 3 of the Coldheart Interstitia in Torghast. This will be the first week this wing is open, so Guardian Druids who held off this past week crafting a legendary, your patience will be rewarded. This legendary is insanely powerful, especially for those massive 3 minute cooldown pulls, as on top of its chance to additionally thrash, 75% of all the damage you deal with thrash is converted into an overshield. This combining with the fact that you have nothing else to spend rage on but iron fur, and your 3 minute pulls are generally where you pop your blood spattered scale, you have a solid 15 to 20 seconds where your health bar will not move at all, and your output will spike anywhere from 10 to 16k DPS. This is the absolute most aggressive bear build you will find it, and it only gets nastier as you unlock more soulbind slots. The second legendary will be our go-to for those nastier affix weeks where mitigating damage taken is the only thing that'll keep your healer off the bottle. Natra Order's Will drops off the second boss of Castle Nathria, and based on Blizzard's recent tuning of legendary drop chances in dungeons, I'd have to imagine the drop chances in raid are probably just as forgiving if not more so. This legendary, along with some more defensive slash healing soulbind conduits, takes your self-healing to a level that rivals, if not exceeds, that which we saw during Legion with three uses of Frenzied Regen. I'll make a separate guide for this legendary as it requires a different soulbind and talent build to make it extremely potent, but I don't see it being a legendary we will need for week one of Mythic Plus. Moving right along to consumables, the biggest thing to remember here is that Blizzard has just changed how potion cooldowns work. Instead of the cooldown starting out of combat, there is just a flat 5 minute cooldown on all battle potions. This means that you'll need to be even smarter about when you use potions as popping one in an inopportune time could effectively kill your key. 
The potions I've been using, which do about 2.5% of my overall damage on just two uses in a dungeon, are the potions of Empowered Exorcism. I line the use of this potion up with my biggest three minute cooldown pulls and go absolutely wild. For flask, you'll want to grab yourself some spectral flasks of power, and for food, the steak a la mode. As a druid, the fact that we can prowl is a huge benefit since we do not need invis pots. However, Based on my initial assessment, in order to not overcap on mob percentage, stealthing past packs is something your team will need to consider in a number of dungeons. Finally, for Soulbinds Week 1, I have gone with Nadia the Mistblade in order to take advantage of the haste buff from Thrillseeker and Agent of Chaos for that additional AoE interrupt on top of Incapacitating Roar. On top of the haste buff from Agent of Chaos, I also went with Unchecked Aggression in the one socket I have open to even further increase my attack speed and therefore my stacks during Ravenous Frenzy. I'm talking out of control lethality with this bear. I've been testing this build without Ursox Fury Remembered all week, and I am blown away by exactly how strong Guardian Druid is feeling. It is unbelievably viable right now for Mythic Plus, and I'm extremely excited to see what happens in this upcoming week. Guys, if you enjoyed what you saw, please make sure to subscribe, hit that little thumbs up button. It helps me grow the channel more than you could know. If you really liked what you saw, Head on over to Twitch. I'm live there every day except for Sunday, 5 p.m. EST till about 10 or whenever I feel like. Otherwise, you guys remember, we rage because we care. I'll see you guys.